Uh, my name is Eric Sheffer. We're in uh, West Tuzik, and we this is Sheffer's Grassland Dairy LLC. My name is John Sheldon Jr. Um, I'm a dairy farmer from Nassau, New York. Pete Wagner, uh, Wagner Farms. Uh, we have a dairy farm in uh, Poston Hill and Brunswick. Keith Wagner, Pete Sun. So my name is John Moore. We live in the town of Scaticoke. The name of our farm is the St. Croix Farm. We're Tildale Farm. We do organic beef, uh, pork, chicken. Uh, We're a dairy farm. We milk 120 cows. Matt likes to make maple syrup. I grew up in the suburbs of Boston. Milked my first cow when I was 15. And I grew up in Colony on a vegetable farm and started milking cows. Two years ago, three years ago. We currently milk 235 cows on grass and we've been milking since 2008. So I am actually the sixth direct generation on the farm. Uh, I grew up here. I grew up in the house that I live in now with my family. And my family has been here uh, since the beginning, literally since 1774. I milk 25 cows and the farm is 400 acres with about 100 out of it tillable which we, we do all hay and baleage. Um, I grew up here and I farmed here with my family till 2006 when they my grandparents sold the cows. And I wor went off and worked on various farm jobs and uh, gathered calves and, and heifers and uh, started farming over in Greene County until I moved back here until November of 2014. We milked around 400 cows. We crop around 1,000 acres. My parents moved here uh, from uh, Long Island in uh, New Jersey uh, in 1952, I believe. Uh, and they started dairying uh, about 10 years later, and uh, I guess we've been at it ever since. It's been in our family since 1932, uh, about 720 acres altogether. We probably only farm maybe a third of that. We rent some of it out to two other farmers, one on each end, and then the rest is either swamp or woods. So we have all the fields that nobody else wants, and uh, we raise a lot of small animals, uh, chickens, ducks, uh, rabbits, some pheasants, and we also graze probably altogether about 100 head of cattle that we custom finish or grass finish. So when I was a little guy, you know, my dad was, uh, we had milk cattle back then in the 60s and early 70s. So it was kind of just expected that you would come down and help out there. You know, we uh, it was just a family business at that point. So that's what we did. We have about uh, 300 acres. Uh, we do about uh, 200 beef animals. We've done we've done organic since uh, 1999, and we sold organic milk for about 10 years, and then we switched over to beef. We both grew up on farm. Stan grew up on this farm. I grew up on this. My father uh, bought this farm in 1938, and then uh, he died in '79, and uh, then I bought it from my mother. So I've been here forever. And I grew up on a farm about five miles, I think it is, on the other side of Hoosick Falls. You know, like I say, in the 60s, it was a dairy farm, so completely different. Um, you know, that was a different uh, set of rules. It was every day, all day. Not that this isn't also, but, uh, you know, the focus was on the cattle and milk production, where now, you know, we've, uh, I think it's very difficult to make any money in the dairy business. Uh, the prices are so volatile that we've kind of changed the other way, and we're more consumer-driven with our small animals and our beef. 
um, and you know when winter time comes around the chicken business is all done so that's a little bit off our plate it's a few less hours you know I'm not afraid to use newer updated technology you know try different things new things you know it's when I was growing up it was kind of old school you know when I was growing up, we were a custom heifer operation and we did everything conventionally. We used freestall barns. We didn't graze at all. And when I was about 12 or 13, my father got interested in what rotational grazing could do to our farm based on our layout and kind of what we liked. Um, so right about then, my father and I, who at the time my father ran the farm, we got interested in rotational grazing and we started going to meetings, learning about it. I went to college in 2004 where I started, we really started to put plans together on how we were going to set up a dairy because we, we got away from the heifer raising. And in 2007, we bought 100 heifers that were grazing type animals. And in 2008, we were milking those in new facilities. So it's, it's completely changed from a heifer operation to a dairy. Automation of milking is big for us continues to play a major role in the business. Trying to be more efficient with the resources we have. Well, when I first started bar uh, farming over in Greene County uh, on the barn I was renting, there was no barn cleaner, so I had to shovel all the manure by hand. So now it's a luxury, you know, to have a barn cleaner, but everybody else, you know, everybody else uses skid steers and stuff like that, but I'm I'm excited to push a button and the manure runs out on its own. We sell retail, which makes our whole business in our hands. You know, it's, it's something that we have to take total control of. When we sold wholesale to a milk company, we didn't have to worry about any of that. Uh, it's, it's a little more challenging, certainly, as far as the business goes, because it continues to change. Um, I've had to learn a lot more about computers and social media and uh, lots of things that I knew nothing about um, and keeping track, you know, keeping track and inventory, uh, all sorts of things that I'd never been involved in. So I'd say it's very different than what we used to do, um, but I, I enjoy it. I enjoy that challenge. I guess, you know, as you get older, you think of it more as a business. Um, you know, when I was younger, like I say, uh, it was a different way of farming back then. It was, you know, you just had those chores that you had to get cranking on every day. Um, but as you get older, you realize it is a business and, you know, there's those decisions have to be made based on business. And if something's not profitable, then you, you know, have to get out of it or, or you know, let somebody else do it. And, uh, and that's, I, I guess it is a business, you know. Well, every dairy farmer is going to tell you the milk price, but uh, you know that's one of the biggest challenges. Um, but you you always find ways around it. You know, there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, you, you know, you work odd jobs on the side, or I do I could do artificial breeding on the side for some some people. The cyclical nature in the conventional milk market is without a doubt the hardest thing we've faced. Um, our second year in was 2009, which up till that point, or up through that point, was the worst year in the dairy industry that was on record. That was our second year in. We made it through it, and we've been growing since then, uh, but we've had ups and downs since then. So without a doubt, the cyclical pay price, um, you know, whether that, that comes and goes, that's part of farming, but the cyclical pay price, when it hits the wrong year in terms of weather, uh, and you get both factors. It's, it's really tough, especially for a new farm that's trying to grow quickly. In 2014, we decided to go the organic route and we are now, we will be starting our third year of the transition this fall. So that's kind of the biggest way that we've adjusted is we actually have decided to stay or to go into a niche market. As far as the divide between large and small, we've always been small, and it, I guess it looks smaller than it used to look, but it still works for us. You know, we don't have to be in debt up, up to our peers, and uh, we can still run it ourselves. So we 
we like that part. We've grown as we've seen uh, necessary. Uh, getting bigger isn't isn't something we're uh, in love with. It isn't. Uh, we. It is not a goal of ours to get bigger. It's a goal of ours. To you know, footprint-wise, I think we're probably one of the largest farms in Rensselaer County as far as contiguous acres. Um, so a lot of people consider us a small farm, but, you know, most of our small animal work, our rabbits, chickens, so forth, takes, takes place in a 10-acre field. Um, so, you know, I, I think we're a small farm, and we act like a small farm, even though we've got a big footprint. There's not enough hours in the day. You know, I'm, I'm a very busy guy, I like to stay busy, and I have a list of, of things to do, and there's not enough time in the day to get it all done. So, I spend a lot of hours here trying to, trying to get it all done. I usually start around 6 o'clock in the morning, and during the summertime, like last night I was here till 9 o'clock, you know, and then during the winter time I'm usually home by 7, 7.30. Uh, the hardest part for me is the time spent away from the family. You know, it's a long day. I've done this uh, full time since I was 19. I'll be 65 next year. So. <laughs> I guess if we I'll, get out of it, it'll be, it'll be to retire and maybe maybe try something a little less taxing. I don't, I don't know what that's going to be yet, though. Most farmers don't have any hobbies. Their hobby is their farm. <laughs> Right after college, I worked with the town of Hoosick on an ag committee that was, we basically updated an agricultural plan for the town. So I got involved that way, and then I was, I was actually on the Cornell Cooperative Extension, uh, the ag PDC, and on the board for six years, and that was up through 2015. Uh, and directly following that, I actually now am on the town of Hoosick Town Council. So uh, I, I've been very involved both from an agricultural standpoint and a local, uh, you know, a local standpoint. I guess when you're a business owner in a small town, it becomes important to make sure that things are progressing and moving towards where they need to go to provide for the future of business needs and uh, also for the next generation, which I'm raising now. I like to think that our, we help a lot of people with we, we try to be a, a positive uh, impact our community. Um, we, we want, like I said, we, we live in suburbia. Um, we try to put our best foot forward to make everybody in the neighborhood here uh, happy to have us here. Uh, One thing we do that we really hope positively affects the community is we uh, clean up Garfield Road through Adopt the Highway. You know, we host a farm tour uh, for the ASA. They bring some kids down for a photography camp. Um, we invited a lot of our chefs to come on a tour this year to try to educate them. Um, you know, I, I think maybe in the future we might be able to do more education there, maybe tying in with the school or, you know, down in Hoosick Valley they've got the school garden program. Uh, maybe we could, you know, tie in with them and, and bring some kids out. and. Do a little more education there but you know i think that we're supplying some pretty good food for the community i like to think that you know we're giving some healthy alternatives there i view us as caretakers of the land that's a big thing i like to think of us as you know, we're, we're here for a, a short window in the grand scheme of things and trying to take care of the land while we're here and leave it behind better for the next person is major for us. I think we're good. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.